For New Corner, we're going to find out more about these toxic algae blooms we're seeing in the water being released from Lake Okeechobee into the Caloosahatchee. Chloe Nordquist from our partners at Hello Southwest Florida, also known as Hello Swiffle, yes, has correct. been working on the big picture here, which we appreciate because we see a lot of this small here and there, but you've been looking at all aspects of this. Yeah, so what you're about to see right now is part nine of a, part two, sorry, of a nine part series that goes in depth on Lake Okeechobee and that blue green algae. This kind of goes more in depth on what exactly is in that algae and where it comes from. You have a, a time for the sample? Yeah, I've got uh, 135. This is Brian LaPointe, researcher at Florida Atlantic University. Yeah cut me a little slack. The samples he is taking will show that nitrogen and phosphorus levels are similar to that of sewage. Some of the highest nutrient content he's ever measured in Florida. Got it, Brian? Yes. Okay. He's been studying algae for more than 40 years. Specifically, right now, he's sampling microcystis bloom, what we call blue-green algae. Microcystis is a toxin that comes from cyanobacteria. This is a blue freshwater bacteria that can photosynthesize like algae. It can't survive in just salt water but it thrives in brackish waters and estuaries where there is a combination of fresh and salt water. Those additional flows from Lake Okeechobee contribute to the reduction of the salinity that we're seeing here in the estuary now, where essentially the estuary becomes like a freshwater lake. It's like a freshwater bubble that forms. Other factors that also contribute to blue-green algae growth. Increases in water temperature, variation in water flow, vertical mixing, light exposure, pH changes, trace metals, and loads of nutrients. Fertilizers and septic tanks that hold our sewage add a lot of nutrients to the waters, fueling the bloom. It's like fuel to the fire. And these algae, when they have high concentrations of nitrogen, they can double their biomass in, in, in a day or less. So these blooms just start to grow and grow and grow. And that is a major source of nutrients that fuels the bloom locally here in the Fort Myers and Cape Coral area. Septic systems and fertilizers are the biggest contributors to nitrogen and phosphorus levels in Florida waters. The, the reason it's blooming here and doing so well, because all the conditions it needs to, uh, for its population to really explode are here and occurring now. <sighs> we love the toxins. Okay. Um, so we're gonna load up. We're gonna put these samples on ice. We're taking these back tomorrow to analyze their nitrogen carbon isotopes to identify the source of nitrogen that's feeding the bloom. These were the tests we saw at the beginning. Remember, nutrient levels higher than sewage. It's made worse when the salt levels are so low. Both the outfalls that are in the estuary and from the tens of thousands of septic tanks that are running into the estuary. You know, those blooms can go from days to weeks to in some cases months or more. In this case, as long as the salinity is low, close to zero, these particular cyanoalgae or blue-green algae are going to be able to grow. Phosphorus and nitrogen and other nutrients like iron fuel blue-green algae growth. But it's hard to determine which nutrient triggers the problem. So where do these nutrients come from? Scientists say us. The more nutrients, the more algae. A lot of people use fertilizers on their lawns in these urban settings and suburban settings. 
and 40% of Floridians rely on septic tanks for their wastewater disposal. So you can see, directly or indirectly, all of us are part of the problem. And it's a wide-ranging problem, as we can see. What was the process that went into this to get all this? Yeah, so there was actually four of us that went out to report this, and we traveled all the way from Sanibel to the north of Lake Okeechobee to really find those answers and get all sides of the story so that the viewer can come up with the conclusion themselves. And we're talking about, we heard you talk about the nutrients. It seems like there are specific ones that seem to be real problems here. Yeah, so nitrogen and phosphorus are the two main, main elements in this freshwater release that comes down the Caloosahatchee River and hits the saltwater, and that's kind of the concoction that we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. However, where that comes from depends on who you talk to. And as far as any potential solutions? Um, well, there is SERP, which is the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, and that is 68 projects really trying to rework the water flow of Florida. However, there's one specific project that's a reservoir south of the lake that can hold up to 120 billion gallons of water. So that's just one of the projects. And as far as short term, we're not really sure what the solutions there are because that reservoir probably won't be done until about 2025 or so. And that's where the frustration comes in when you have this exactly. day after day, week after week, people want something quick to clean it up. Exactly. All right, we look forward to seeing the full series, nine parts coming yeah, up. Nine parts. And we'll be having this coming up this weekend. So if you've missed the previous report on this or you want to see this one tonight or throwing a lot of information at you, you can join us again this weekend for those special reports. We appreciate you and the team at Hello Swiffle for helping us out with Thank this. Thank you. All right, thanks, Chloe.